to great new AI video generation models for you this week, Skyreel's V1 text to video and Skyreel's V1 image to video. For the technically challenged, or if you don't have a modern day GPU in your computer, then another option is to use their website. They have a lot of example videos for you to look at, and whilst this is sort of a human-centric model, there is plenty of variety shown. If I scroll down a bit, let's see what they've got. Well, here are some evil cats doing a spot of cooking. You should be able to see these are various four-second long clips that have been strung together along with a bit of story text. Over in the tools on the left, you'll find a lip sync tool and a way to generate drama. Well, that's what it says. Anyway, I much prefer to avoid drama and generate on my own PC. So let's dive into that now. First up, if we take a look at the model, whoa, that seems pretty hefty, doesn't it? Plenty of five gig files. Not to worry though, as Kijai has provided various cut down versions of the model, ideal for those with lower end GPUs. There is also a short video to show you how they compare, and even the Q4 looks okay, though I'm going to be using the FB8 version. Back over in the Files tab, you can see the various file sizes, so pick the one that fits best into your VRAM. Note there are two sets of models. For example, you've got one which is I to V, and another one down here which is T to V. Unfortunately, this doesn't have the quantized versions. Whichever one you pick, save those into your Comfy UI Models Diffusion Models directory, like I have done here. There you can see Comfy UI Models Diffusion Models, and I've got the I to V and T to V. Oh, and while you're there, you may also like to grab the image to video workflow file as well. Interestingly enough, the license file, although this was apparently based on Hanyuan Video, is very different to Hanyuan Video. And for starters, well, it's quite confusing, but hey, um, it's got license Apache 2 as a tag at the top, but this quite clearly isn't an Apache 2 license. They've also got another license file there. So basically this license file seems to say, have a look at this other file. And then when you look at that, it's okay. It's got this Skyworks model, all this, and oh, that's interesting here. A non-exclusive worldwide non-transfer. Oh, so it looks like, even though I couldn't use Hanyuan because I'm in the UK, this one, it looks like I can. You will need a couple of other files as well, such as clips, and rather than going to all the different repositories, they've been saved into one place over at the Comfy Org Hanyuan repackaged repository. So go and have a look over there in the split files. So there I've got the clip L in the Comfy UI Models clip directory, and over in text encoders, so Comfy UI Models text encoders, there is the Lava Llama 3. Starting off with a text to video workflow as it's a bit more straightforward in the loading section there you can pick the files you just downloaded. Things should automatically offload but just in case there I've set the device on the dual clip loader to CPU. There's a wave speed node there because I wanted to test whether it worked or not and it sort of does but it does really badly impact the video quality so for now I would suggest avoiding it. For the prompt, you always need to start like this, so FPS-24, comma, and then have the rest of your prompt. Like in that example, being a rodent, I figured I'd start with a sci-fi scene where a woman is trying to save her crew from an evil space kitten by ejecting it from the airlock. Don't worry though, because no pixels were harmed during the generation of this video. The negative prompt is optional, and it may be best not to put too much in there, so play around and see options for the sampler, this one being kind of the standard default, so to speak. So DPM++ 2M with the beta scheduler. Normally that needs a few more steps as well. So 20 to 30 steps is typically good in there. After testing loads of different options, these were my favorite two, uh, both of them Euler. So that one, Ancestral Dancing, and the other one, the alternative version of CFG++. The plus plus samplers, as you may know, tend to prefer a slightly lower CFG. So that's why I also threw in a rescale CFG, which seems to work, although perhaps not necessary in this case. There is also a tiled VAE decoder up here. Now this works for me, but if you've got much lower VRAM, you may need to make these a little bit slower so you could shrink it, cut everything in half, for example. And then finally, the video that actually generates I'll let it loop a few times so you can see what she's doing. So she's meant to be pressing the airlock button and sort of shooting the evil space kitten out into space. It does look a little bit more like she's closing a door, but it's still not bad. I think it's 
followed the prompt reasonably well. Now this video is 5 12 by 7 20, 18 steps, 77 frames and took 7 minutes to generate on a 3090 and I think it's well fairly reasonable quality especially given the low step count. Remember the time needed not only depends on your own hardware but also the resolution and number of frames so it's possible to cut that time in half you could generate a video in three minutes or indeed you could double the time and make it take 14 minutes talking of time i originally started comfy ui with sage attention enabled as i sort of just do that by default now though even without that performance option enabled there was only a 20 second difference generating a one second clip and it looked identical so if you don't have sage attention installed don't worry, it will still work just a little bit slower. There are a few other little settings in here, such as this model sampling SD3, and of course these flux guidance values as well. Setting shift to six and flux guidance to one seem to work absolutely fine for me in most cases. And let's have a look at these three videos. Okay, so this is shift three on the left, shift six in the middle, and shift nine on the end. How much difference has it made? Well, not a lot. Now, one thing that definitely will change your video output a lot is the number of frames. More frames also equals more VRAM, uh, the same going for resolution. So if you increase the frames and increase the resolution, you're gonna need a lot more VRAM and a lot longer to generate. So for these next videos, I've used 720 by 544 and various numbers of frames. The prompt is for a rodent with long blonde hair who is casting a cheese summoning spell inside their wood panelled burrow which has a squirrel painting on the wall in the background. So quite a long and complicated prompt and uh, well let's have a look at these. So the first video here is 25 frames, a whole second long and that took just under 15 gig using these particular settings. The cheese has already been summoned in this case it seems but overall it has followed the prompt. With 49 steps, the result is very different. Seems to be a bit of moustache action going on there too. For the three second video of 71 frames, everything has changed again. So you see how changing the number of frames will give you a similar video that follows your prompt, but you can't necessarily say, oh, I want to make that video longer because it's just gonna turn out completely different. In this case, she's certainly more female looking and I really like her spell casting abilities. 97 frames gives a four second video and whoa, what's going on there? That is some very hardcore spell casting indeed. I love that fur motion though. It seems to have lost the long blonde hair. That squirrel painting in the background is awesome. And well, as for VRAM usage, it's up to almost 19 gig now. So I'm almost running out. Generation time is at 10 and a half minutes too. For the 121 frame five second video, I'm at 20 gig and almost 16 minutes to generate. The result is, wow, well, it's really followed the prompt here because the, there wasn't any cheese and now it's being summoned and appearing on the table, um, even if my squirrel does have two tails. The example videos on their website had all sorts of different styles and subjects, so let's do a quick anime test. Uh, this prompt is also much shorter and more basic than last time, so how will that impact things and how many steps do I really need anyway? Let's have a look to start with. So here I'm going to do a totally outrageous 10 steps. Uh, is that going to be enough? Well, let's have a look and see. Ooh, yes, it sort of is. It sort of is. So this is obviously very quick and I don't know what the rest of the video is gonna turn out like because as we saw, changing the number of steps changes the video, but 10 steps, that's not bad. If I crank those number of steps up to 14, then it turns out I've got a massive beaver, probably something to do with all those noodles. Up to 18 steps now and not bad. I'm certainly seeing the quality increase and those steaming noodles do look delicious. At 24 steps, however, the two characters seem to have merged, which isn't really what I want, but hey, the quality's okay. And finally here at 30 steps, I've got my beaver back, uh, even if he does have a bit of a noodle nose. Poor little guy. I guess the anime test worked just fine then, and it looks like anywhere between 18 and 30 steps is a decent range. Feel free to go higher, of course, if you've got plenty of time. Now, so far I've been using my alternative sampler, but how about if I connect this one up instead? What does that one look like? 
Well, unfortunately, as mentioned, I don't think it's quite as good. I even had to increase the number of steps here from 18 to 24 because 18 was, well, it, it was horrible. Let's just say that. <laughs> Anyway, that's the basics of the text to video. Hopefully you can see all the various things in there, shift and steps and frames and samplers. So let's take a look at the slightly more complex image to video workflow. This one, of course, uses the other model you downloaded, the i to v one. It has got a bunch of extra custom nodes such as KJ nodes and Comfy UI essentials. If you don't have those, You'll need to install those via manager. Not to worry though, it's all pretty straightforward stuff. Let's have a look at this as we zoom out. Oh dear, that does look a lot more complicated, but don't worry, it's only one basic change really. So here I've got my image and my prompt. The prompt is for a cybernetic dolphin that's communicating telepathically with a woman wearing white body armor. So the prompt is my version of what I can see in the picture. The picture going through a resize there. It's also got some noise augmentation. Hopefully that should make things a little bit more different. So there you can see it's got lots of noise. What happens then? Well, it goes up to an instruct pix to pix conditioning node. So there I've got my prompts and it's adding the image, but it's not using the latent output. It's just adding it into the conditioning. As for the sampling, it also looks really complicated, but it's just a standard split Sigma setup. Why are they doing this? Well, the first one there has a high CFG and the second one has a lower CFG. As you know, when you set CFG to one, it ignores the negative and so runs twice as fast. In this case, then I've got 24 steps. It runs 18 slow steps and then finishes up with the faster ones. Totally optional, of course, you don't have to do that. You can do it exactly the same as in the text to video and just use one sampler, but well, if things can go faster, then why not? Overall, this 49 frame render took five minutes with 24 steps in total, 18 of which with that higher CFG. I think it did very well indeed, especially given the vagueness and fictional content of the prompt and image. Pretty sure I can hear the dolphin telepathically in my mind as well. This time I'm going up to 77 frames for my rodenty pal here. I've asked it to make her walk down the street she's in. Just 22 total steps this time and eight minutes to generate. As for the walking, sure, it's obviously AI as the people in the background seem to be doing weird things a bit like her eyes, but it's still pretty impressive. In my day, it was magic when sprites didn't mingle colors. Overall, then, it may not be up to the level of paying to use a website, but you can at least do as many generations as you like at home for free. Ooh, nerdy rodent. He really makes my day. Showing us AI in a really British way. 